What's happening, everybody? How y'all doing out there? Today's guest is Ryan Wolf of Richmond, Virginia's Windham, who came through New York to play the Desert Fest along such bands as Elder, Weed Eater, The Skull, Danova, Black Cobra, ASG, and more. But we caught up on a sunny Saturday for some stepmom drinks. You'll hear about what those are in a little while. Uh, unfortunately, with my fractured arm from a freak bicycle accident. But we talked about their fantastic record, Eternal Return, and his preparations for said album when recording drums. Early tour memories in his dad's construction van, Portland meth heads, how he came across his black Vistalite kit, gas station drum sets, and a whole lot more. So stick around and check it out. Shout out to my sponsor, New Orleans Record Press. If you're looking at releasing vinyl, go on over to NewOrleansRecordPress.com to look at all them sweet-ass vinyl, coloring, packaging, mastering, electroplating, lacquer cutting options, as well as a real-time quote generator. And they print both 12 and 7-inch records in both 150 and 180 gram variants. They also print runs as small as 100 records and up to pressings in the thousands. And they can also assist you in design and any other questions if you got them. Just give them a holler, and that's NewOrleansRecordPress.com. Tell them Crash Bang Boom sent you. Crash Bang Boom podcast is available on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Play, and more. Check out my Facebook and Instagram pages and give me a like, a follow, a subscription, etc. It would be greatly appreciated. Just hit that little button. So here we go. Ryan Wolf, Windhand, Richmond, Virginia. This makes three, including TJ Childers and Dave Witty. So without further ado, let's do it. Crash Bang Boom. Crowds go mad with joy. Yep. All right, Ryan Wolf, what is happening, man? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. <laughs> well, we just made the connection that uh, the last interview that I did with TJ Childers, he is your sp- like space mate. Y'all share a, a rehearsal space? He's my fuck off mate. He Okay, there you go. <laughs> Amazing. What a small world that now somehow back-to-back interviews are, are two guys that share of space together. We've, yeah, we've shared a lot over the years. <laughs> Wow, we're good. We're good friends. Inner Arma and uh, our Wind Hand, the band I'm in. Yes, uh, we share a practice space together. So that yeah. is awesome, man. And this is obviously Richmond, Virginia. Yep, Richmond, Virginia. Right on, man. Yeah, uh, they were TJ, and the, they were they were killer when I saw them last time. They, I think they were. There was, the, yeah, that was the other weekend. Yeah, yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just last That's weekend. Good. Awesome. Yeah, man. Inner Arma, I should say, for those who might not know, and check out that episode if you haven't already. Thanks for sitting down. I'm glad we can catch up. It's a nice ass day, man. It's sunny, windy. Yeah, it's your, perfect. Your kind of environment, man. Yes, I'm into it. Ryan was just telling me that he's the kind of guy that sleeps with a sheet over him in the winter. So, needless to say, this motherfucker burns hot. Running hot. Damn, coming in hot, buddy. Uh, well, it's funny, man. TJ and I, we were both geeking out on Ludwig drums, and it appears as though uh, you, you, you're a Ludwig fan as well. Yeah. Uh, so we can uh, we can get into that. I totally, it's going to be like the recurring conversation that I had just had with him, probably about John Bonham and Ludwig drums and right. everything else yeah. associated with yeah. it. But. I, yeah, they've, they've <laughs> definitely spoiled, they've definitely spoiled me. I hear you. I am, I am an absolute fan. Uh, well, man, congrats on uh, on this last record that y'all put out. I'm Thank a you. fan of it. Awesome. Uh, I'm a fan of the discography, the cool. if you will. So tell me a little bit about what brought you out here through Brooklyn. I believe y'all are playing the Desert Fest tonight. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it's a uh, Desert Fest. They've uh, been kind of doing it all over Europe and decided to bring it stateside and ask us to play. So here we are. So awesome. Gonna, yeah. Who else is on the bill today? Because they're doing three days of it, is it? Yeah, yeah. Friday, yeah. Saturday, uh, Sunday? Yeah, today is, I think last night was at like St. Vitus. That's right. Uh, today uh, we're playing, Weed Eater's playing, Donova's playing. Awesome. Um, there's like two stages um, that Sick. are going. So, yeah, it's... Cranking it up. Yeah. There's going to be some weed smoking today. I do believe so. It's, yeah. And with <laughs> I the, had to guess. With the swirling winds, yeah. Half of Brooklyn <laughs> probably be high tonight. Sweet. <laughs> My kind of night. Yeah. Beyond this show, did y'all just come in for this weekend from Virginia to, to play this? Yeah, we just, yeah, we just drove up. We we just got back from Europe like a couple weeks ago, and really, we just drove up. Yeah, how was Europe? 
Europe was great. Yeah, it was awesome. It was three weeks, and it was the perfect amount of time. And yeah, got home. Been uh, been home for like three weeks. Been kind of rough uh, getting home with some personal matters, and then Uh-oh. it was like you know like fuck it, let's get the hell out of town. <laughs> yeah, we get out of town. We're like leaving town. We're like hell yeah, traffic the whole way here. Fucking sucked. How um, long did it take you to get here? It took us ten hours. And then wow. driving over the Delaware Bridge, it was blackout rainstorm yesterday. Wow. And the windshield wipers broke. Oh. So I was in like like <laughs> rush hour traffic, middle lane on top of the bridge, going over the top, and all of a sudden the wiper stopped. And I oh. couldn't see shit. It was like driving, seriously, like just think if you're as drunk as hell, the drunkest you've ever been, and then think about that driving and with no wipers. Like, Dude. That was like, that was the visual that he got. And it was just like, I'm tripping out. I have no idea. Like trying to see any kind of lane or that you're know, like the, like the white lines that you could. Oh my God. Yeah, it was pretty freaky, but we pulled over to a Wawa, limped to a Wawa. Luckily we waited out the storm and then drove up to this Wawa and this, the, the gas attendant let us chill under the awning and we fixed it. So holy moly, yeah. dude. Yeah. That was so. a p- potentially dangerous situation. Yeah. 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 Speaking of dangerous situations <laughs> for the listeners that can't see, obviously that my arm is in a sling because I fractured my arm two days ago. My ridiculous story is that, uh, it, you know, the weather's been pretty nice and it'd be kind of chillier in the morning. And then, you know, later on in the day, it'll warm up. So on my way back from work, I commute uh, via my bike uh, part part of the way in my commute to get to work. And on the way back, I tied my hoodie on my handlebars. Mm. And um, I have this bike that has a pretty narrow fork and brake and tire and everything. And apparently the sleeve fell down into the front wheel. Gotcha. And just locked up my front wheel. Yeah. I mean, if it if it if a sleeve fell a hundred times, I don't know that this would happen even ninety nine at the time. I feel like it was just a total freak occurrence. But it happened on a boulevard. And it'll whip your ass right over. I went straight over the handlebars. Uh, managed to not fracture my hands, but I got crazy ra- uh, road rash. Both of my wrists are bruised. I'm having a problem gripping things, and I fractured uh, my upper arm. I have a fracture in my humerus bone. Mm. So my arm is in a fucking sling, and I got road rash, and I'm feeling a little gimpy and feeling like I was in a car wreck. So well, He's uh, looking good. He's looking good. Yeah, yeah. You know, I managed to keep the moneymaker intact. That's what, that's what matters. And I, was not, I did not get run over by a car because this was a two-lane highway with uh, no bike lane. And I luckily had a car that was far enough behind me to where they could hit the brakes and turn on their flashers. So, but I mean, the second I got up, I rolled in off of the street and in between two cars to make sure I wasn't about to get run over. So it was, it was, uh, in one sense could have been significantly worse, i.e. death. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I'm feeling a little beat up, man. But, uh, you know, the white wine helps. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, man, tell me a little bit about, uh, this, this last European run, uh, that y'all, y'all did. Uh, I'm a fan. I've only done it once. I went over there and it was, uh, I've often said that it was, if there was one moment I could point to in my 26 years of playing that that was kind of the justifying moment, so to speak, where yeah. I actually felt appreciated, and it was uh, it was really an amazing experience. So, how how long have y'all been going to Europe? And uh, are there any particular countries that you feel really really enjoy? And enjoy get down it with y'all. Yeah, I enjoy it all. It's 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 a weird it's a weird thing just because you go over there and that it's. They treat you so well, you know, they yeah. way better in the States. And oh, of course. So many, like, usually the shows are kind of, you know, sometimes they're bigger here than in the States. Right. But then, the, you know, they're just like super critical about like, you play too short, why? Are you talking about the Germans? <laughs> You're talking about the Germans, aren't you? Yes. You're talking the Germans specifically yes. are the people that do yes. that. Yes, why you not play longer? Yeah. Yeah, what is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve from Torch, he was like, Last time you were kind of shit. This time not so much. It's yeah. like wow. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Is that a yeah. is that a compliment? Yeah, we played in Berlin like a couple years ago, and like there was no way to get off the stage and kind of like chill. Uh-huh. And they want so we just like kind of bolted for the back room. Yeah, and they were like trying to do an encore, and we we're just like ah fuck it, whatever. And then we get this fucking crazy email two days later, and it's like, what is your problem? Never have I seen a band have a bigger crowd scream for more songs, and you give them no songs. Oh, he goes. What is wrong? Why do you do that? You insult us. Da, da, da. It's like, fuck off, dude. Like, give me a break. The Germans are fucking yeah, hardcore, man. For an hour and 15 minutes. Like, come on. Like, I'm done. It hey, is you should so too. weird. Why do you want to hear more of this? Yeah. I know, right? Right. I agree with you, man. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This is a, a re- one of the more recurring themes whenever I, I talk to Europe. It's about the, the stoic and super dry delivery yeah. and, and criticism of yeah. the Germans. Yeah. 
It's crazy town. I, they're actually not that bad. This yeah. time, honestly, the the Otter one was like the Netherlands and and uh, I can't think of who else. Uh, the Netherlands was was a little dry, drier than what I remember. Really? Yeah. Just kind of like wait and watch and look. Right. And you're like, what are they doing? Are they into it? Yeah. What are they doing? But they then you get a left. Cr- then if you like, my experience with the Germans was they were like kind of into it and kind of like having this this intellectual kind of like critical view of what's happening. Mm-hmm. And then, then they start getting excited towards the tail end, and then they want more. And you're like, "Well, that's interesting. You didn't seem overly excited necessarily during the set." And then you talk to them afterwards, and they were like, "They, they, they, they'll tell you how much they loved it." Yeah. Sometimes, and you're like, "That is interesting." The <laughs> honesty I can appreciate, though. I will <laughs> yeah. say, like, it, it, it's it's better that someone kind of is like upfront and just fl- bullshit. Yeah, you. yeah, fluffing you up, <clears throat> and then turn around and be like, "That's what shit." Yeah. You know? Like, please tell me I was shit when I was shit. Don't right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I could see y'all absolutely. Absolutely going over well in Germany. They really seem to dig like like slower, kind of stonery, Jimmy yeah, the stuff. That that <clears throat> has been like since we've been going over the German shows usually are like the bigger the bigger shows that we've done. Wow. Um yeah. That in London is in in, in the uh Scandinavia. There's awesome. Usually, yeah. The are y'all shows. are y'all at a point to where y'all can headline over there? Uh yeah, well, that we've yeah, we've not really done many support tours, honestly. Like we've only gone over there on our own, like as well as headliners. How many times have y'all gone to Europe? Uh four times. Okay. Yeah, do you believe four times? Right we're on. We're about to go again this summer and do a bunch of festivals. That's awesome. Yeah, so congrats on that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. So uh, y'all are from Virginia, but is there any particular state here in the States uh where you feel especially uh welcomed and the people really seem to dig the band? Yeah, um, you know, like the Northwest is usually really, really good to us. California, really? yeah, California is really good. Right on. Um, so we, I used to live in Portland, and then we've recorded two albums out in Seattle. So like the the Northwest, yeah, kinda seems to like there's a there's a hominess to it. Like yeah. there's a little bit of a connection there. Um, You're originally from the South, man. So I can uh, Portland is a weird town, dude. Yeah, I it, it was like a an amusement park. Like it, when I lived out there, it was like it was like a Every night there's like three shows. Like, yeah. You know, like every night and it's just like, okay, how are we gonna do all of these? And yeah. just like we're out and about busting ass. And then the next night, same shit. And it's just like, this is like like yeah. someone here, you know, like taking a ticket, <laughs> like, you know, do I have to like re up? Like, is this an all you can ride yeah. you know event? And yeah, it, it kinda it wore me out after a little while and it, it the weather kinda just kinda grinded me down. I bet. Yeah. So I just was like, I I can't do this anymore. Yeah. But it's beautiful. It's Oregon's the north. The Northwest is great. Yeah. Portland is just such a culturally strange city, and it, yeah. I realize like Portlandia is more real and yeah. more accurate than than Portlandians would ever even, even want to admit. Like white the people weed. hanging out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and everyone's so like super social justice warrior, f- yeah. far left as they can go. Yeah, almost too left to where it comes back around to the right. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they're almost yeah. indiscernible from each other yeah. in their inflexibility. Yeah. And they're like ideologue, like yeah, you know, I, nature. I could get into a lot of that shit, especially being from the <laughs> South. Like, you know, a lot of people, like when we moved out there, like there was a lot of like, you know, like, oh, you're from the South. So obviously you're fucking racist. This, yeah. And I'm like, dude, can you look around yeah. and tell me right. what color you see around you? Yeah, right yeah. Now? You're surrounded like, by white people, yeah, motherfucker. You're, yeah, Shut you're, up. you're surrounded by a lot of white people. <laughs> like, you know, like my, my running joke is that they're kind of overcompensating for their lack of diversity by yeah. by sort of virtue yeah. signaling this this uber uber far left yeah. rabid inflexibility no, that is its own form of conservatism. Yeah, like you said, it's almost and you would know that and I would know that because we're actually from the south. Yeah. And yeah, I did grow up around some ignorant motherfuckers yeah. down there. And I know this sort of inflexible, sort of dogma like rabid mindset. And it, it's the same with them. They're just waving a different ideological flag. Yeah, it drives yeah. me crazy. <clears throat> yeah, somehow they're exonerated, and you know, <laughs> right. like they're they're just in what they're doing. Yeah, because they left wherever shithole <laughs> town in the Midwest. You know, exactly. So yeah, they made it on their own and graduated yeah. clown school. Right. You know, and now can ride a fucking unicycle juggling. So like, they're better than me. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Clearly. 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 It, yeah, it was pretty weird when I when I was moving out there. Like it was early. 2000s and everyone was like just like dude watch out it's dope heroin it's bad like yeah you know watch yourself like you know don't get caught up in that shit wow and, and he moved out there and it was like the exact opposite it was all meth 
Oh, just whoa. fucking meth heads everywhere. Really? Yeah, I worked like a I worked at a plaid <laughs> pantry, deuce deuce. Uh plaid <laughs> pantry number twenty two. <laughs> Of a plaid pantry? plaid pantry. It's like a Seven Eleven. It's like oh, the really? Northwest oh, version no of like yeah Seven Eleven. And I did the overnight shift, and oh, I did dude. like I did ten. It's like it's eleven twelve hour shifts, and I did ten days in a row. And the first night, I was like, "What the fuck? This is crazy!" Like <laughs> I need to be writing this shit down. Like no way, this is crazy. And then the next night, it happened again, and I was like, "Oh, uh." Ah. And then the third night. It happened again, and I was like, "Whoa, uh, this fucking sucks!" Like, fuck this shit. Like, yeah, people coming in, like, just like trying to like distract me to like steal stuff, and it was just like, "Okay, man." Like, you know, like there's like five of them. There's like two dudes at the counter being like, "Hey, man, where's this? How do I get here? Hey, man, look at me!" And like three other people walking around the store stealing shit, and it's just like, "Hurry up, get the fuck out!" Like, right. you know, like hurry up, just get the fuck out. And then like two hours later, they come back and they're like, "That's the motherfucker that gave me the wrong directions." And like, "No, no, 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 I did <laughs> not know." And they're like coming around the the end of the uh the 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 counter, like trying to come after me, and I'm just like, "No, please no," you know, like prostitutes coming in, like Whoa. dropping their crack pipes, what? and then cops walking in right after them come and, on yeah dude. and just being like you know like and then like the cops leave and i'm just kind of like are you okay and she's like i'm not working and i was like i'm not trying to pick you up <laughs> i was just trying to ask you if you generally were okay like you look like you're in distress you got out of some dude's car he's out there revving the engine you dropped your fucking crack pipe <laughs> the cops walked in like it's okay to be like that sucked you know because obviously that sucked <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, so, so I did not witness that side of oh, Portland. Yeah, fuck yeah, that was yeah, I, so much shit. I've tried to forget. Like it, it was like that. How long did you have this fucking job, man? Oh, I didn't last very long. Oh, I, clearly, <laughs> I got my boss. Unless fired. you're just a glutton I, for punishment. I got my, my boss actually got fired because um, so much shit got stolen during my shift. Uh, they averaged around like two hundred dollars for like a monthly, <laughs> monthly like Loss. theft. Yeah, in wow. my first two weeks, it was over six hundred dollars. <laughs> you were like, "Listen, man, go smoke your meth and steal shit. Just don't fuck with me. I'm just trying to make some money yeah, here." It's just like I'm just trying to live another day to go on tour. Like I'm counting down the days till we leave. That's all that job was. Was fucking tour filler, you know? Like whoa, yeah, I wow, dude, didn't last very long. <laughs> Those are some fantastic stories and sounds like they absolutely worth writing down at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Growing up, so where were you born? And uh, obviously based out of Virginia now, but you're originally from the Carolinas? Yeah, I was actually born in New Mexico. Was only there for a few months and then went to North Carolina. My family's from Virginia. My dad was in the Air Force. Okay. So we ended up in North Carolina for pretty much all of my life. And wow. Then, yeah, that's where I was. And then kind of moved around North Carolina a bit. Yeah, and went out to Portland and went out, went, lived in Philly and back to North Carolina. And now I've been in Richmond for like 10 years. Wow, man. So, uh, at which point did drums come into your life, and how did it become to be? Yeah, got an older brother. You oh, know? do you? Yeah, I rode around listening to Diver Down by Van Halen, like nice. all the Van Halen stuff, and um, nice. Zeppelin, Pink Floyd. All the classic um, rock. Yeah, he loved Peter Frampton. Like, it just... Really? Alive, yeah, it comes alive. Like, right. all that shit. And, like, it was... I liked music, you know? Like, I didn't know that I would ever play. I liked it. Tried piano. Sucked. Yeah. Totally Sucked like started to like get interested in girls and so and just was like i don't want to do piano anymore yeah chase then, chase chicks yeah, yeah at six years old <laughs> chasing chicks yeah. at six years old yeah right damn son so but yeah and then you know but always tapped i always tap shit you know yeah, and yeah. just you know and listening to zeppelin and stuff and like i don't know just one day i, I turned to my dad and i was like i think i want to play drums no shit yeah and he was like okay and like nothing, didn't say anything. And then he was like, hey, do you still want to play drums? And I was like, yeah, sure. And um, so then he was like, come on. And we went to his buddy's gas station. Uh -huh. It's like a garage gas station. And in like the little 
like little office space, like on like tile floor. Like he had a he had a uh, uh, Pearl Export Series set up, and uh, he was like, "All right, this is how you play four beat." And he was just like, "Count the four on the hi hat," you know. He's like, "One, two, yeah, three, that's four. Where we and all then, start." Yeah, and he was just like, "On the one, hit the bass drum. On the three, hit the snare." <laughs> and then, you know, got it down. Him and my dad just like talked for like fifteen minutes while I played, and he walked back over and he goes, "I can show you another beat." On the one and the two, hit the bass drum, snare, mm. hit it on three, you know, uh-huh. and do that one. So it's like, doop, doop, chip. Yeah. Doop, doop, chip. That's right. Let me do it for 20 minutes. Came back in. He's like, all right, take these drums home. Call me in a month. I'll let you practice with my country band. Come on. And I was like, okay, cool. So we loaded them up, went and put them in my brother's uh, room. He was in college. Put on the headset, just started fucking wailing, you know, thinking yeah. I'm like playing along with the yeah, thinking I'm doing it, you know. I'm like, I got this shit. <laughs> I have no idea what it's going to sound like, but I got headphones on, you know, playing everything. And then next thing you know, like some friends were like, "Hey, we we want a drummer. Do you want to like replace our drum machine?" So there you go. I replaced a drum machine and that was started the first gig. Yeah, and started playing drums, and I never called the dude back and. He never got his kit back. I no, he never asked for it back. My dad, I think, I think something happened. Obviously, because the dude never asked for it back, and like, and, and once again, his kit was set up in a gas station. This was his garage gas station. Yeah, okay, yeah, it was a real. It was a seventy nine Pearl Export series. Do you still have it? No, actually, I I bought a when I bought my first kit, my, this Ludwig kit I got in Portland. Yeah, and we moved when I left Portland. I gave my kit to uh, a buddy of mine because. You know, it was kind of given to me. So I was like, hey, why don't you take it? It was given to me. Yeah. And then he actually gave it to someone else. Wow. So, yeah. So, and do I, you know, do you know who has it to this day? I apparently some like weird skinhead in Seattle had it. <laughs> Come on. Uh, yeah. He, my buddy was like, I'm not proud of it, but the dude's kind of an okay guy. He's kind of got some uh, weird, sketchy, like. Might be a little bit of a Nazi. Yeah, well, not, not, yeah, well, not, no, more of like a pro worker skin. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Not, not a, not, not like, gotcha. not Seek Highland, but yeah, right. like a, you know, workers' rights, you know, whatever. It's all, gotcha. It's all convoluted shit. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so he was like, you know, he's kind of a big dude. He needed a drum set. I, I didn't know what to do. I was like, did you charge him for it? And he's like, no. And I was like, that's all that counts. Okay. It was passed on. Yeah, there long, you go. yeah, like, so that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. My first kid, I sold it to this guy who's literally a used car salesman and he came to my house and played it and he was loaded as fuck. Like, like had been drinking, must've been drinking all day. Hell yeah. Showed up <laughs> like pulled into the driveway and, and on top of that, he's a used car salesman. So his whole pitch and the whole thing, he talked, oh God, he yeah. talked me down to the point I where bet. I was like, you bought a car I just, from him too. <laughs> I, I, I was like, I just want you out of the house. Yeah. I, you, you know, I got some money for it, but unfortunately that's where my first kit went to this fucking drunk, dumbass. Just leave my you literally <laughs> used car salesman that showed up in my house at one point. Yeah. But uh yeah, man. So tell me a little bit about this kit that you got in Portland because it sounds like a really unique kit. I'm not I'm I'm a fan of Visalites. I have one myself and yeah, uh, I'm I, not certain that I'm I've even seen the kind yeah, of kit that I, you're talking about. Yeah, so you know, I, I the kit I had was fine. I mean and then I, I just knew I wanted a Ludwig kit. I was like, I got I want a Ludwig kit. And there was a man, I can't remember the name of the music store in Southeast Portland. John Sherman, you can help me out. Um, it's actually by where my buddy John Sherman lived um, out there. And it's a good fucking music store. And walked in and uh, sitting just like on, they had like a shelf above everything. And yeah. it was just like this Ludwig kit just sitting up there. And uh, I was like, what's up with that? They wanted it for like 550 I think, 575 Wow. And um, the guy was like, yeah, he's like this old guy came in. It was just like, you know, my wife bought this for me. She just recently died. I can't stand to look at it. Can you please take it off my hands? So they're like, yeah, no problem. So they bought it off him, put it up there. It's um, 12, 13, 16, black, solid black Vistalite, not the Smokies. Right. Um, so and it's not translucent. It's no, actually blacked it's out. It's solid black, and people don't believe that. But it's acrylic. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's Vistalite. And people, they don't think, like, when they saw it, they're like, that's not Vistalite. Yeah. It's like, dude, look inside. You can see the inside. It's black. It's but it's got rare... a maple It's got a maple 24-inch kick, but with huh. black wrapping. And I I'm, wonder what happened to the original bass See, drum. I don't know. And, I've, and I can't remember who it was I actually ran across one day. Uh, this is years and years ago. And they had the twenty. They had a twenty-four inch black uh, acrylic Vistalite kit, the solid black. No, and way. I was like, dude. I was like, where did you get this? Yeah, and I don't remember what what, what that story their, was. Yeah, yeah, you know. And and he was a younger guy than me. Um, 
it was actually in Richmond at Strange Matter. No, and sure. um, yeah, and I was like, dude, I have like been trying to find like the matching bass drum for this because I told him, you right? Know? And he was like, whoa, that's crazy. Like he's like, yeah. He's like, I've never seen toms like that. He's like, I just have like I have the the kick. You know, so oh what? Yeah, so dude, he's got to sell you the kick, man. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's pretty wild. Like so, but uh, he, that 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 drum kit was it was awesome. That's that's where I feel like I I definitely cut my teeth and and becoming something of a drummer. Oh, yeah, <laughs> drummer. <laughs> I don't know what I am. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I mean, it's certainly something to be said when you get a particular kit that sounds a, per- a particular way, and and that the you know when that jives together, ele- everything gets elevated with it. Yeah. You know, just yeah. when playing it, it, it makes absolute sense. I talked to TJ about this. You know, it's like the cyclical aspect of beating something that sounds amazing, and it that that reciprocating back to you is a is a is an amazing experience. It's it's cool. When, yeah, it, it, talking about beating something that sounds good. It's it's <laughs> it's it's funny because like you like there's people that like. Like I've seen people just like sit down on like a toy drum kit, yeah, and it sounds like shit. Like right. anyone that sit does it, but that person sits down and can make it sound just amazing. And I, then there's also yeah. just like there's these drums that like no matter what, like you, it's just they've got it. Like yeah. it's just it was yes. made perfectly. Yes, you know, like it's yeah. it's it's cool. And then trying to find the balance between and like how good you are and how good that drum is, and like <laughs> how to make it sound just right for you. Right, and you. right. That's wild. So then after spending some time in Portland, you've got this kit. Uh, you moved back to North Carolina? Yeah, back to North Carolina. The band that I was in at the time, uh, Face Down and Shit, went to Europe. Face was, Down and Shit? Yeah, Face Down and Shit. Right That's on. the name of the band. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. We went to Europe, and then, yeah, and then kind of, yeah, ended up in Philly, and it fizzled out. And, yeah, I was living in Philly for a while and did uh, play in a band called Attitude Problem, and it was like me and another drummer okay. and uh, my buddy playing uh, bass. Right on. So, so in uh, it, along this journey of playing in bands, it sounds like you've had a history of touring and and obviously playing live and doing the whole thing and having uh, probably odd jobs in between all of those tours and everything yeah. just to balance it. But uh, how old were you when you first started touring? I guess. Oh, I was in high school. Really? Yeah. So uh, we would do shows uh, when I was in high school, when I was like 15. Like seriously, after I started playing drums and got in that band a yeah. month after I started playing, like we started playing shows like almost every weekend. Wow. Even during the week. My dad like has, dad has a construction company and uh, family owns a garage door company and they had a, a work van and it was like, it was like, we got to the point where like we could drive and it was like, hey, we need to, we're going to go play a show do you think we could use this work van? And his rules were take everything out. Yeah. You know, put the equipment in, be back and then put all the equipment in or the work equipment back in before the guys show up the next day and make yeah. sure you're at school in time in the next morning. Wow. So that was it. Like, so we pff, gone every weekend, gone just every, just, every, it was almost like it was, um, there was a stretch there where we were playing a show like every weekend or at least every week, for months, like when I was in like 16, 17 years old. Really? Like all around like Eastern North Carolina. That's awesome. Yeah, we were like playing garages, barns. Wherever you could play. Yeah, just like my dad has an old warehouse. We like put a big show on there. Like we did like did like huge benefits. You know, I felt really shitty like thinking about it because like it was like, oh, you know, like $3 in a can of food, you know, to donate. Right. You know, like we'd get all these bands play and like some bands would come like two and a half hours away and they'd be like, can we get some gas money? I'm like, ah, but it's a benefit. Oh, and now I'm just kind of like thinking Not, about it like, like that's <laughs> fucking shitty, but I was 16. I didn't know. Like, you know, <laughs> so, but yeah, but yeah, like we were doing shows with like 200, 300 kids, like wow. just coming from all around playing like warehouses. Like dad would be there, it'd be like a bonfire going. And, yeah. Like, yeah, it's like we did this everywhere, like all around Rocky Mount, North Carolina, Greenville. That's so cool. Yeah, like Jacksonville. Yeah. With that first band, what were what were your influences at the time? Dude, I I don't know what I was fucking doing. Like I had, I had no idea. I mean, you know, like it you know, like there there was a lot of, you know, John Bonham, but like even just like I mean it was just I was just play as fast as you can right. at that point you know it was just, that's kind of how it starts out it was just boochie 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 yeah. boochie boochie chee, 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 boochie 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 you know yeah. like that was it like that was the <laughs> that was basically the what we i mean we kind of just learned on the fly like yeah. the idea and thought of like oh i should like i should like practice or learn or study that fucking that 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 never came across 
You know, yeah. it was just, you were like, just like, let's play. go, let's, let's play. just fucking play. Like, learn what on we're the job. doing. Like, we're out. Like, yeah. you know, we're not in fucking Goldsboro. Like, we were like, granted, we're in Greenville, but like, it's, yeah. like, it's 45 minutes down the road. But, yeah. you know, it's like, whatever, we're out, we're gone. This was like, doing it. That was all it was about. Like, yeah, you know, like, so, but I mean, you know, like, I, I, I really, you know, I, I listened to a lot of Minor Threat and like yeah. a lot of Metallica when I was younger. Like, I mean, oh, yeah. you know, Master of Puppets is like easily probably one of my favorite albums. And, you know, people talk shit on Lars. That's cool. And I talk shit on Lars, but like that album, like I listened to it yesterday. Like that's, that's just solid drumming. Like yeah. I, I love it. You know, TJ said that not only was and justice for all a major game changer for him, but he actually does cite Lars as an influence. You'd be full of shit to not say that that right. didn't. I mean, who, like, I, I don't, I didn't delve too far into like stuff like, like back then, like it was like, it was, it was what it was. And like uh-huh. Metallica was what it was. Yeah, it was like, you know, like, incredible. It was, yeah, it was insane. It was amazing. Like yeah. that. I'm not too good for Metallica. I will never be too good for Metallica. You know yeah, what I mean? I like, I love it. Like that. Well, that, this is, I've said it before. This is a conversation that happens amongst drummers only. No one else gives a shit what Lars plays or doesn't play. This is just what some silly conversation that drummers have. And for me, it's like, I don't, what, regardless of his drumming style, those records are incredible, so I don't Amazing. really care what he yeah. did or didn't play. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I know that the first time I heard For Whom the Bells Tolls, which was the first song that I ever heard, and that was on, obviously, Ride the Lightning, and I think Master of Puppets hadn't even come out yet, but when I heard that, I was like, this is the most... It was, like, monumental. I remember yeah. where I was. I remember the exact experience of hearing yeah. it. It was a fucking game changer. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was one of those things where it was, like, growing up on, like, rock, like... And that, like, that was there. And then, like, my, like, Iron Maiden and, like, Me- oh, yeah. Metallica, like, that was, like, you know, that was sort of, like, the metal angle yeah. that it got. I didn't go too far deeper than that. Right. Like, and, I, and I'd stayed away from Iron Maiden once I realized how fucking good Metallica was, you know? Yeah. And then from there, it just went, it became, like, it became, uh, it was Nirvana, and then it was like well, yeah, the minor, '90s happened. Yeah, so. you know, yeah, and it's like Dead Kennedy. I was listening to a lot of punk rock. Love the Dead, you Kennedy. know, Dead Kennedys, a lot of Minor Threat, a whole yeah. lot of Minor Threat. Yeah, you know, and so it was just like play fast, play fast, play yeah. fast. Like this whole idea of like intricate drumming and like right, like I'm not doing that. Like, yeah, you weren't starting a prog band at any point. Like, yeah, I was just just blasting through, and then like kind of like from there, like it was like I hate God, and it was like once I heard I hate God, it was like fuck. Joey is this this is this is the shit like, that is so wild because this is the I'm, shit. I'm, I, I saw I saw I hate God I've, I've told this story before in fact I've, I've interviewed a couple members of the band and I think I talked about the, sh- the show that I'm about to tell you about within both of those interviews but uh, I saw them in, and I've spoke, spoken to Mike Williams I think it was 1992 when I saw him nice. so they were all what that band was at that time was just a terrifying band yeah I can imagine they rolled in they looked scary as hell <laughs> Uh, and the, the, they played at this place, the abstract, uh, cafe, it was a bookstore, uh, a cafe, and it had a little venue that was really like a garage in the back where they would throw these shows and they played there and they pretty much killed the lights. So you couldn't see much, but what little bit I could see, uh, Mike Williams within the first star- song started like smashing chairs and I think broke a bottle yeah. or something. I was out about a song and a half. I was like, this is so volatile. I got to get yeah. the fuck out. This is straight up dangerous. I'm getting out of here. So that was my first time seeing them. And well, that, I've since become a, become a fan, and I really do appreciate them and realize the influence that they've had on so many bands. Oh, yeah. Like, when, when we were playing, like, in the mid-'90s, the goal was to be as just disgusting and gross yeah. as fucking I Hate God sounded. <laughs> like, I mean, just, like, physically. Like, yeah. just, I mean, they're just... Dre- <laughs> I had fucking super long dreads. I never showered. You really? know, you had it, dreads? It down past my ass. Like, really? Yeah, it was just, like... Just punk as fuck, dirty, <laughs> disgusting, and it was just to be as heavy and disgusting and vile that like that that, that is of, of what came through when you listen to I Hate God. Like, right, that was it, and like that, like his drumming, like I, it's 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 stuck. Like that is really yeah. interesting. That is very rare. You're the only set. Uh, I'm on 130 plus episodes, and you're only the second person that I've I think no, I've it, ever heard it's, it's, cite him as an influence. No, I'm, it's, but it's interesting. Man, he's so good. Like I yeah. still like. Just like air drumming to it, like still, like I can't. There, I still. There's parts where I'm like, oh, what? what he yeah. Do? What he do? Oh man, shit. Yeah. You know, and yeah. like, and that's the thing. It's like he's, he's just clever. Like it's not fucking flashy shit. Yeah. You know, like, and and that it's like it's subtle and like just like real clever little like off time like fills and just yeah. like Tom hits here and you know like well the whole band is is incredibly unorthodox in their approach and execution and the the whole thing is. 
it's just a bizarre concoction and bizarre chemistry that works yeah. in, in that band. It, and trust me, when I saw them that night, there's no way in hell that I thought, oh, this band, first of all, is going to be around much longer. Uh, yeah. They're still playing. Yeah, I'm still and shocked. damn near died, but a few of them, yeah. one of them did die, yeah. Joey, yeah. you know, rest in peace. But uh, I would have never thought that that band would be around, much less become any kind of influence. No, man. No, it blows I my mean, mind. I'm sure it had a lot. To, I mean, the music's there, and also it's, it's very solid. But also at that time, like, smoking, like, insane amount of weed. And yeah. I got arrested for weed at an I Hate God show. <laughs> Did in, you really? Yeah, in Raleigh, North Carolina. Come I got, on. Yeah, went outside to roll a joint and got busted. Fuck. And then went in and, like, watched them play. Like, I just got, I didn't, like, get locked up or anything. Oh, he wrote me a well, ticket. that's a big, that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what you got to say. Yeah, okay, yeah, you yeah. didn't go to jail. Didn't for go it. to jail. Didn't go to jail. <laughs> yeah, wrote me a ticket, you know, okay. like whatever. Yeah, then, ticket, you, yeah. yeah. And then went in and saw him. But like, just all of that, like just being fucked up. I was super stoned and wasted and like, yeah. just seeing like there was a, a spiral action that like they somehow created when when I listened to them where the guitars went one way and the drums went another way and it like worked in a spiral like, but yeah. in, it, but it always caught up twice. Yeah, you know, like that was like that's just like that's how I visualize it in my head. When that's I, interesting when I hear that band yeah. and like it's just like because they're together, but then they walk away. You right, know? And like and that was that's like a big big part of like yeah. kind of like where I went forward with like trying to play drums. That's interesting. It's a very loosey goosey style and totally idiosyncratic across the board. But as you said collectively it makes sense and it's a particular sort of language that they've developed and that they own and, and they're still doing it to that day. feedback right who does right it's like i'm just like did they fucking like have that like recorded prehand and like how do you consistently get the it's every they, time they always you know it. yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's bizarre, and I mean, props to to Aaron, their drummer man. He's good, to, yeah. To, to step in, and I tell you what, I honestly, with all respect to all the formations and everything, they've been touring and playing so much that to this day, they're the lineup right now. I honestly don't know that they've ever even sounded better. Yeah, they're, I, um, you I've, know, Mike, I've been, Mike cleaned himself up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, they're really firing on all cylinders. I haven't seen since Aaron joined. Um, I tour. We played some shows with Aaron's other band. Uh, some odd years back, and he was like, yeah. "Mountain of Wizards, yeah, Mountain of Wizards, yeah, yeah. I know all those guys, yeah." Okay, so he was, and he was like, "Hey, he's like, I'm, I'm playing drums now, and and I hate God." And I was like, "Oh no, shit, that's cool." Wow. And I was like, "Oh, because he's really, he's a great drummer. I yeah. like him." So I was like, oh, "I really want to see them with him. I haven't had a chance yeah. to catch him, but I'd like to." I like to see it. It's a funny thing because they sound absolutely incredible. Like I said, they've never, I don't know they've ever played as much as they're playing now. They're just touring yeah, their asses off. It seems off. like they're they're getting out there. Yeah, more. but I mean, as a guy who's, I've studied a lot and and studied with drum set and came from marching band and like classic band and like all this, all this stuff, it would be really hard for me to get that style right. And he, he gets it. Yeah. You yeah. know? Because once again, it's such a particular approach to the drums. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, it's an unlearned formula. That exactly, which I would have to I, I'd have to unlearn so much that I couldn't yeah. even do it. I couldn't yeah. do it justice. Yeah, it's it, crazy. Yeah, I I guess that's like it 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 kind of made sense to me just because in in a way it was just like he's doing like because you know like I, there was like there was a moment in time where like I was like trying to study and it just like it was just like this fucking sucks. <laughs> What the fuck? I don't fucking da, 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 right. Da, like this Sit is down so form- yeah, this is so fucking ru- like formulated and like yeah. And it's just like I don't I don't know where would it, how you know how yeah. do you put this in a song? Where does it go? Like and yeah. then you just start thinking of like all the stuff that you don't know and it's like it just would give me a panic attack and it's like this isn't fun. I don't yeah. want to do this if this is how it's supposed to be. You know per se like you know like I I just went at it in a way that it was just like okay I'm gonna get really stoned. I'm probably gonna drink some beers, and I'm just gonna fucking wing it, and I'm yeah. gonna get out there, yeah. and then hopefully I remember something, <laughs> you know, and like hopefully it's gonna be cool, yeah, like you know, and then That's like a, yeah, like that that was a good like solid chunk of my drumming and like playing, like it was just like get fucked up and just I don't care I'm doing this I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do that That's one hell of a then, mantra, man. Yeah, and then you just fucking like you you find out like oh that guy is right right like that that's right for that when well, you're in the moment you know because yeah and and that's kind of just where I pulled from because I'm very because what I've noticed like I'm I don't I'm real literal mm-hmm. when I play drums like I'm very literal with the riff mm-hmm. like you know and and that's and then I just try to kind of shoot off yeah. here and there and like you know and, and and there was a point where it was like. I kind of was 
self-conscious, like thinking like, I'm not a good drummer. I need to go do a bunch of things. Uh-huh. And then it was just like, I don't fucking need to do all this. Like, you know, like <laughs> who gives a fuck? I don't care. I don't, I'm old enough to not care anymore. Like, that's back, right. you know, and like, isn't that, that's yeah. beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. It took me to get to my late thirties. And then once I just said, you know what? Fuck all of these conceptions about where I should be, what I should be doing. Yeah. I've been doing this long enough. I've now been playing 26 years at this point at, you know, but it, it it's, it's, it's absolutely liberating when you and you your playing will be better the second you stop trying to be something else. Yeah, and yeah, just yeah. accept just what allowing, you are, what allow, you do, yeah. and your playing will be more natural, and you'll be a better version of yourself when you do it and you make that yeah. realization. Yeah, I mean, too, and we're like, both old enough to have this. Yeah, realization. and too, also like <laughs> playing in Windhand, it's like. Nobody coming to see me play drums. Like, you know, it is a lot of Dorothea. Everybody's ready to rock out. Yeah, it's Dorothea's voice. It's the fucking riffs and the leads. Like, it's yeah. that, it ain't me back there. Whack, whack. <laughs> Cheers, by the oh, way. Yeah, cheers. Thank you. Yeah, drinking some stepmoms. Woohoo! Stepmom being a little white wine with a little bit of orange juice in it. That's right. As opposed to the mimosa, uh, yeah. champagne and orange juice. We do the Bellinis, which is obviously champagne and peach juice. Oh, nice. That is yeah. some sweet shit right nice. there. I drink it with my pinky out because I'm a fancy bitch. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and those stepmoms are dangerous, especially on a warm, warm day. As, and as, as I was telling you earlier, I was at, at the airport in uh, yeah. San Francisco and ordered at the bar, I was like, hey, man, can you make me a drink? Just uh, Chardonnay and a little splash of orange juice, just like a mimosa. Yeah. And I was like, call it stepmom. And yeah. this woman, she was pretty sauced up. The older lady, like mid, you know, like mid-40s. She looked at me, she goes, I'm a stepmom. And Uh-oh. I was like, uh, okay. And she goes, next time my life sucks, I'm going to go down in the basement and make me one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Damn, girl, you didn't need to go down to the basement. Hopefully, you could just make it right there in the kitchen. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, tell me a little bit about this band, Wind Hand, of which I said earlier I am a fan, uh, and I really dig this most recent record. How did you get in the band? How did it form? How did this come about? Because you had obviously, did you move uh, back to Virginia for the band, or did you move no, back to Virginia and join No, the I band? just moved to Virginia. Yeah, gotcha. I, I moved to Richmond to be closer to my family in North Carolina and my family in, in Virginia, in the western gotcha. part of the state. And... Uh, no, I just like I was playing with some friends. Actually, playing in a band with TJ. Oh wow! Yeah, he was playing guitar and I played drums. No shit. And um, yeah, we were we were doing some stuff. And uh, Garrett, who's in Windhand, actually uh, he recorded he recorded some stuff for us. And um, but we, I saw them playing and like so they'd gotten together and um, Garrett and Ezekiah, He was the other guitar player. Ezekiah? Ezekiah. He's no longer Holy in the shit. band. That's He's no longer in the band. Yeah. And uh, this guy, Jeff, he was also playing guitar. Well, they didn't have a drummer, so Jeff was like, hey, I'll play drums. Yeah. So, and he wasn't really a drummer, but he, for not being a drummer, he did a, he did a pretty good job. Yeah. And I saw them play, and I just was like, and this is like, I love this band, but straight up walked up to Garrett and Ezekiah, and I was like, hey, man, I want to be in your band. Your drummer sucks. <laughs> Just such Straight a up, dick man, such a dick. But that got but, you the gig. But well, he actually he had a child and he had a, like more okay. important things to do, so Understood. he actually did have to quit. Okay, and uh, yeah, and so then I ended up being uh, I I got the job. <laughs> that is that is amazing. Yeah, and and before and actually before I was in the band before all of this, uh, they were just like looking for a singer and they actually put up on Craigslist, I think. Is that how you found thing? Dorothea? Yeah, that's how they just put up like looking for a female singer, and this is like. 2008 maybe 2000, wow, 2007 what a score, dude. 2008 yeah that's amazing and she just like randomly saw it and like they met and like she started playing with him yeah Bam, what a what a what a story that yeah. is that is wild yeah well tell me about this last record man where'd y'all record it and what was your experience recording it and um for some of the slower stuff it's what i talked to tj about as well because you know inner arma has such you know sort of uh, it has an elasticity to it in their style, yeah. which isn't, you know, what is more commonly gridded and, and uh, super locked into a click track, et cetera. And uh, y'all stuff seems pretty loose 
as well. So uh, when it comes time to record that record, uh, are you do you do you use clicks on that stuff? I don't know. I've never used a, no. That's never, awesome. Never used a click. I'm like, jealous what, of you whatsoever. No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't not used one in a studio situation in probably 17 years of recording. Yeah. Not one, not not even one song, not even a section. I don't even think. I've never, I never really knew that like that was like a, a thing until you know like some odd years ago. Like wow, actually with TJ talking with TJ, we, I we're like we've done a lot. Yeah. <laughs> we talk a lot. Have y'all yeah. docked yet? I, I, <laughs> keep it on the DL. You don't need to tell me. Tell me later. <laughs> the drummers that dock together stay uh, together. Fuck off. <laughs> Sorry, that's it. <laughs> um, I've no, I've never, I've never fucked with the click track, I, I, and I'm always told to go slower too. So really, yeah, I always tend to like kind of speed up. But I don't know. There's like an emotion that you feel like with like with. This, Especially in our songs, because it—I mean, it's a simple fucking formula: A B right. A B, yeah, C part with the, with the riff or right. with the lead, and then back to A B A B. Right. But it's somewhere in there, like that lead gets going, and everyone's like, get excited. Yeah, everyone's cooking, you know. And then the next thing you know, it's, it just seems like a natural progression, right? You know. But of course, when it comes to like, you got to get back into the to next recording, part. Recording, well, yeah. yeah. When it comes to recording, you know, it's like stay steady. So, but no, like it, we this it wasn't actually. This is probably the most prepared I've ever been. Like. Usually I just go in and I have a loose idea of like what I want to do. Like Ooh, just I really, it. yeah, wing it. Oh just, my god, dude, I'm the absolute opposite of you. I well, I've <laughs> always like I've always just been kind of like I think I know what I want to do here. Oh my when god, when time comes, I'll fucking do it. Like you know, wow. but like with this album, I don't know what it was. Like everything like really came like like came together, and I, I knew what I wanted to do. And that's then there great. was there's one song. It's actually like the longest, slowest song, and that's like the first time I've actually like sat down and like like written out with each measure like this is the fill you got to do yeah this is the fill you're going to do here because yeah. it's just so slow it's right. like it's the slowest song that we've probably done i struggle to play slow shit too. and we haven't played slow in a while like we've been kind of like picking things up and on this album too like that was the main thing we wanted to make songs shorter a little bit more popular, uh -huh. like, like a little bit more upbeat. Yeah. You know, like we wanted to get away from, you know, like, oh, it sounds like Electric Wizard. Right. You know, like, because, you know, it's because if you play slow, you either sound like Black Sabbath or Electric Wizard. Right. So, yeah, you yeah. know, like, so we, you know, like it was just like, it was, we wanted things to be more condensed, you know, and, and yeah, I wrote shit out. I had like four sheets next to me when I re we recorded the song and I've never done that before. Wow. But it was cool. I, I've, yeah, I, I it's, I'm most proud of this record. Like, it's my. I think it's my favorite of what y'all done. Yeah, so I, that's it, cool. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm into it. it. We, you know, we wanted because I don't listen to heavy music. You know, like none of us really do. Uh huh. Um, Are you, you know, a soft rock guy? Do you yeah, take bubble baths and drink I will, drink dude, rose and fucking, listen to Hollow Notes? I will fucking rock the shit out of some Steely Dan like <laughs> yeah, any dude. day of the week. Yeah, like we're trying to like incorporate shit that like we normally listen to in our everyday right. life and right. like as opposed to yeah that. incorporate it in and like still make it somewhat like mm -hmm. a win hand song right you know like because you know like i i i listen to a shit ton of country music you know like yeah. it just, i love old country yeah, stuff i, mean, I have just, a george jones record over there called i'm a people do you yeah, know that no i'm a people dude I don't it's think literally I know called I'm a, I'm a people i'm like what the fuck is that <laughs> When we're done with this, I'm going to play you the opening uh, song of it. You will yeah. laugh your ass nice. off. It All is right. some hilarious country shit. Yeah, no. I, yeah, I <laughs> fucking Jerry Reed. Or yeah. Oh, I love Jerry Reed. God, is the greatest comedian on earth. Man. Oh, it's hilarious, dude. <laughs> so that was the experience uh, recording. It sounds like you went into it a little more prepared and it had notes yeah, and everything. So, and yeah, we went, with, uh, we went back out with Jack and Dino. Uh, he recorded the last album. And um, this time was like... It was great last time, but it was a little bit more businessy. Uh -huh. You know, like he was he kind of probably still feeling us out. Like yeah. he had like set things he wanted to do, and it was just like boom, you know, it was yeah. all done. And um, this time, like since then, we've become we've become really good friends. Like outside of music, we've been been out there numerous times and like hung out with them through on tour and just other stuff out yeah. there. So like it definitely showed. Like we sent him like very rough demos, and like we showed up, and he was like. All right, only you're gonna try this amp. You're gonna do this over here. You're gonna do that. Right you know, on. he's like, I got a crazy idea for this. You know, cool. like he was real into it. Like we were, you know, Producer. compared. Yeah, he produced. Like he did a really well, like a really good job at seeing like this rough vision that we sent him. That's great. And where we wanted it to be, and like his, he's. He's got perfect pitch. Like That's his awesome. ear is amazing. The best producers do. And he is amazing. Like he just yeah. hears shit, and you're like, nope, 
like no you know like you know and like he him and dorothea worked so well together yeah we actually got him to sing on the album oh cool you wouldn't know it he sings he sings like a couple harmonies he does falsetto harmony oh cool and and you would not know that it's him because it sounds like it, you would just think it, it was Dorothea doing it. Sweet, like he's just That's so awesome. in tune. Like it's nice. It's amazing. But no, it was cool. It's it's awesome when you know, like you 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 do a playback and he you know, hit stop and he's like, "Why'd you do that? What do you mean? Why'd you do that, Phil? Yeah, what? That sucked. Do it again." <laughs> like, ah, well, damn, dude. damn, dude. Go easy. Are you German? <laughs> yeah. But it was cool because it was you know it was like I know what he meant. Like right. I know why he told me it sucked. You yeah. know, like I, I was like, all right. Fine. Right. Cool. I'm gonna badger you about something stupid later. Exactly. Like, you know, like it's cool. Like it, it was, it was a more of like a, it felt more of like friends being in the studio. Yeah. Than like, hey, we're here with this dude, like recording yeah. this album. That's what you want. Yeah. So he's a sweetheart, and like you know that dude's been around. Like I mean, he's he won like Grammys like in South America for wow. the for the work that he's done. That's you cool. know he goes down there like like one or two months out of the year, like he nice. goes down to South America so, and he does like pop albums, you know, right like on. he just does it all. He's been around, you know, he's done yeah. it all. So that's kind of what we wanted. We don't, yeah. you know, we didn't want to put out the heaviest, sludgiest <laughs> thing, you know, <laughs> right. like that's not kind of who we are, yeah. you know, right now in our lives. So we right wanted, on. yeah. Well, shit, man, I'm looking forward to catching y'all tonight. Again, congrats on this record. Good luck on the European run, and hopefully y'all are coming back through uh, New York again soon. Yeah, we got some we got some stuff coming up. We'll so, have yeah. some celebratory beers. Thanks. I'll even be able to cheers it with my right arm. All right. Ooh, I'll be able to <laughs> lift it. <laughs> right on, Ryan. Well, good talking to you, my man. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in, and hope you enjoyed the talk. Thanks to Ryan for stopping by, and be sure to check out Windhand Live if you can. They were absolutely killing it at the Desert Fest. Once again, immersed in the sonic molasses. It was so good. But we'll catch you on the next one. Check back in. Crash Bang Boom! <laughs>